What's up everybody? Welcome back to Night Rise Studios. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of goals for 2024 that we are trying to hit. So please, just, 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 just hit the button. Come on. It's free. Come on, please. All right. Enough about that. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to route your live show through Pro Tools. Let's get into it. So this is the live session for my band, A Deadly Endeavor. We use this to practice and for our shows. Before we get into what's over here in these folders, I want to point out that we have everything mapped out nicely with memory locations and tempos. This is good for two reasons. If you're on a strict 30 minute set, you can time out your set to fill that time so you are basically just hitting the space bar and your show is going. Or if you're playing a more laid back show, you can stop between songs, engage with the crowd, talk to them, and then you know what song's coming up. And it's a good way to keep everything very organized. So we have everything in folders just to keep everything nice and neat. This is probably one of the best updates that Pro Tools ever came out with. In this first folder, we have two click tracks and that's only because with all the noise in our in-ears, we wanna make sure that we can always hear the click track and because sometimes it can get lost in there. So that's the only reason why we have two. This next track is just a drum track for us to practice without our drummer. Sometimes we have to do that because he's in a really talented cover band that plays out all the time. So right now it's inactive because we're gearing up to play some shows this summer and we've been able to practice with him. So that's pretty cool. We have a count track and this is just so everybody who's wearing in-ears knows when to start the song and we all start at the same time. So in our ears, this is basically how it would sound. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a really cool thing and everybody would kick in at the same time. You could count the clicks, but if one person is off, it can mess up the entire thing. So I would record myself doing it or just find something on the internet like I did. Um, and we also sometimes put it right before breakdowns as well. Um, like in our song here, Serpents, there's a little bit of a pause and we want to make sure that that breakdown really hits and we all come in together. So this is how it would sound. One, two, three, four. So definitely recommend doing that. Next, we have a guitar folder and, you know, we are a four piece band. We tried to be a five, but it just didn't work for us. And before I get flamed in the comments, Bad Omens and Spirit Box are four piece bands and they do this as well. Um, we reamped all these tracks with the tone that is on the quad cortex. So it's the same exact tone and it's just like a rhythm track. So when our guitar player is playing solos or leads, you can still get that rhythm going and we have an extra chugs track. So our breakdowns really hit and just some ambient stuff. So everything could sound like, uh, the album and we have so many layers for our songs and they're just really important and we want them to be heard. All these tracks get routed to this bus right here and all we have is just the STL Tones plugin and we have a high cut and low cut. For the production side of things, this is just some bass drops, um, some impact stuff. So like right before this breakdown, as you can see, it'll sound like this to the crowd. One, two, three, four. It's just to give it a little bit more oomph and impact so those breakdowns and choruses really hit. We have a vocal folder. This is just for some extra background vocals that, you know, that we can't sing live. We only have one singer in the band and a lot of the times he's doing choruses and we have some background stuff going on at the same time. Like in our song Anxiety right here, you'll hear it. So while that's playing out to the crowd, he's actually singing the chorus over that, but you know, it definitely fills it out and it sounds more like the record. So the next two folders are probably the most important ones because those are the ones we're actually playing through. So in our live vocals folder, we have two tracks for our guitar player and one track for me. We have two tracks for him because we have everything automated, which I'll show you in a second. So he's able to run on either side of the stage and sing and not have to worry about switching his patches on his quad cortex. We are currently using the STL Tones plugin, which I'm getting ready to switch out for the Howard Benson Vocals plugin, because uh, this one we were getting a little bit of latency and it was really messing with us, so we're going to switch back to the uh, Howard Benson Vocals plugin. 
Note, if you are using the Howard Benson Vocals plugin, you do need internet connection. We found this out the hard way and it absolutely sucks. Either the session won't open or if it does open, it'll absolutely crap out and it does not sound good for the crowd and it does not sound good in the ears. So if you're using that plugin, make sure you have a hotspot or connect to the Wi-Fi and make sure it's a good connection because you do not want to lose that. Next is our live guitars uh, folder. And for the bass, we have nothing on it. We dialed in the quad Cortex really awesome. So we don't have to worry about any putting anything on it. And for the guitar, we just have the same plugin as the rhythms in the same preset. Um, and these are the MIDI patch changes. So our bass player doesn't even need to touch his quad cortex. He basically just tunes up and he's ready to go. And our guitar player uh, use, touches his pedal board once for a wah solo. And that's it. They tune up and they're ready to go. And all of these tracks, except for the click, and I'll tell you why in a second, get sent to this master. And all we have is just a clipper, just to make it a little bit more louder in our ears. And just an EQ. And, you know, every in-ear monitor is going to be different. So definitely experiment with this. This is just what sounded good to us. We went through so many different iterations of this EQ. And this is the one that we landed on that we like the most. So definitely play around with that and go with what sounds good for your ears and what sounds good to you. And as you can see, the master you actually can't send out. So on the back of our 18i20, there's outputs and we send everything to its own individual output. And that's how we're able to send it to front of house. So we send everything that's here to this track right here. We really don't even need this, but we added this later on and I didn't want to get rid of it, just being lazy. Um, so six, nine, and 10, those are our actual in-ears. So everything here is getting sent to our in-ears and you're probably wondering why there's only three instead of four. Well, our in-ear box sits right next to our drummer. So he basically just plugs right into the headphone output and he's able to control his own volume and he doesn't need a wireless pack or anything like that. So that's why there's only three. So, and we send the click there uh, to the, to our ears as well because we didn't want it to go through the clipper and just be blasting our ears and go through the EQ and sound all weird. We just wanted the click sound. So that's why that's not going to the mix. That's just going straight to our ears. So our guitars are getting sent out of number eight and that's getting piped out, going right into our mic splitter and right to front of house. And then it's the same for our production and our vocals. We actually have them going through the same one, number seven, because we don't have them that loud when we play live. So it's just basically there to give some vibe. So we were able to get away with putting them through the same one. For our vocals, we're doing three, four, and five. Same thing, we plug directly into the interface with our microphones. They get sent out through the interface into the mic splitter right out to front of house. So we're able to control our own delays and have effects and do all that stuff live and it sounds great. So basically we just have to roll up, give the guy our tails, and he really doesn't even need to do anything but raise some volume faders and we're ready to go. Um, and the guitars, we didn't need to do that because the guitars, we just plug right into the mic splitter, it goes right into the interface, and then the other half goes right to front of house. Simple. We don't mic up the drums just because ambiently they're really loud and even on bigger stages we can hear them just fine. Uh, so that's why you don't see any drum tracks at all. And that's basically it. I know it can get a little confusing sometimes, so if you have any questions at all, please follow me on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to help you there. And also, don't forget to give my band a spin. The band name is A Deadly Endeavor. We have new music coming out this summer that I can't wait to show you. And if you have any need for mixing services at all, please hit me up on Instagram or also email me. I'm open for bookings and I'm ready to get working this summer. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like I said, we have a lot of goals that we're trying to hit for 2024, so please, 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 just, just hit the button. Yeah, just, just hit it. It's free. Just remember, it's free. Thank you so much for watching. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.